Something that's extremely important when it comes to having football conversations and quality football conversations is context. And context doesn't just apply to football, but just in life in general. Say, for instance, you going to work and you end up getting there 30 minutes late. Your boss is heated. Why are you here 30 minutes late? You, your shift started a half hour ago, but you just showing up now? Oh, no, 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 no. I ain't taking that. But little does your boss know that your, your kid is sick, your kid was throwing up this morning, or they had a fever, they just were in a lot of pain, and you didn't know why, but you had to take care of that because that is of the essence. But all your boss sees is that you were late. They don't see the background behind it. But when they find out what, what the background was behind it, they're like, oh, okay, now I get it. This is exactly what's going on this week with Lamar Jackson. There have been several people that have been saying, oh, man, Lamar Jackson had a bad game, terrible game. They look at the numbers, 22 for 38, missed 16 passes. What? Lamar, what is that? And you didn't even throw a touchdown. You, you didn't throw a touchdown, and you threw a pick, and you got sacked four times, and you fumbled the ball. What, what is that? What kind of garbage game is that, Lamar? That's what a lot of people are seeing. They're seeing it on surface value, but they're not digging deep. They're not looking at the context. And Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp, they have been two of the biggest that have done that this week with Lamar Jackson. And they have questioned whether he deserves the contract, whether the Baltimore Ravens are even getting their money's worth when it comes to Lamar Jackson. Something Stephen A. Smith brought up. He said, uh, even though you got those drops, so this... This part is what makes it worse because he brought up the drops, but he pushed them to the side. He said, even though you got those drops, at the end of the day, if you don't turn the ball over, you win anyway. This man has been turning the ball over, and that is not what they are paying him to do. Lamar Jackson has an NFL worst 11 turnovers in the fourth quarter or overtime of one score game since 2021. That is inexcusable. So, with Lamar Jackson in this game, this past so now he obviously did bring up more than just this game. And the fumbles, they have been a problem, especially this year. Now, with those fumbles, there have been some that were, hey, it's like, Lamar, what, what's going on? Because there was the one, I remember the, the handoff to Justice Hill where Lamar dropped it too early. There was one where Lamar was in the pocket and he was throwing, but he ended up throwing a ball and somebody hit him while he was throwing. And this, so some of them have been on him. And then there was another one, I think it was in week one, where he was running with the ball. And the Texans defender said, no, you ain't about to shake me. And the Texans defender knocked it right out of there. So there have been some fumbles that have been on him. But if you look at a lot of the other fumbles too, they have not all been on him, especially the one in this game toward the end of the game where Lamar Jackson, and, and especially when you look at it on the all 22, you done seen the different angles of it and stuff. Ooh, that makes it hurt that much more because Lamar Jackson, he had dropped back to pass. Ravens were down. He had dropped back to pass. He was looking. He saw Odell getting ready to break and he was getting ready to throw it. But Ronnie Stanley had got abused by Alex Highsmith and Alex Highsmith just came right around the corner. Boop. Knocked it out. And that's happened several times this year. So while some of the fumbles have been Lamar Jackson's fault for sure, there have been other ones where there's literally nothing that any quarterback could do about that. And again, I feel like a lot of people are missing the context. Now, um, a lot of people are talking about Lamar Jackson hasn't been worth the money. Oh, man, you ain't even throw no touchdowns or turnovers and da-da-da-da. And they're looking at this last game. Like, oh, no, Lamar, what a bad game for Lamar Jackson. But, again, this is why context is so important. Con context is everything. Because if you don't have context, then you don't have a quality conversation. And the fact that Lamar Jackson's contract is even being brought up after a game, especially after a game like this, like he continued to show you throughout this game why he was worth the money. But, unfortunately, in this game – the receivers didn't cash in at all. There were drops after drops after drops. Now, one drop that I actually got to take back and uh, I, I got to take it off of Zay Flowers. And it wasn't even a drop is when Zay Flowers tripped. Uh, when I was watching the game live, I was like, oh, man, that was a perfect pass from Lamar. He put it right on the money. But um, it, they said that, that the wind actually made the ball sail. Uh, on that play uh, I know uh, the, Seeing the all 22 A couple of people Have shown it I know Ryan Mink He highlighted it too He showed the goal post And you know how On the goal post They got the little flag And that flag was Blowing heavy uh, But the ball was Going one way And then the wind Kind of took it another way And that's what Threw off that pass With Zay Flowers But besides that All those passes That were dropped 
they were on the money. And and if all those passes are caught, even if most of those passes, it ain't even got to be all of them. But if most of those passes are caught, then it's a completely different ball game. Completely different ball game. Because as we highlighted before, there were uh, 14 points. Well, since the touchdowns were six, uh, but there were 12 points that were dropped. Dropped. I mean, technically it was 18 points because Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman, they both dropped touchdowns too, and Nelson Aguilar did as well. But with Rashad Bateman and Mark Andrews, those touchdowns were dropped back-to-back on that same drive. Ooh, and that makes it hurt that much more. Um, But with people saying Lamar had a bad game, a lot of people, what they've been doing this week, they've been erasing the first two, three quarters, and they've been fast-forwarding right to the fourth quarter. They've They've been like, all right, them first three quarters, it didn't happen. I ain't concerned about that. I'm only concerned about the fourth. Now, Lamar Jackson did throw that interception uh, to Odell Beckham Jr. And whoever you want to place that on, it's it's all good either way. Whether you want to say it was a bad pass from Lamar Jackson, I know some people feel that way. Some people feel like Odell Beckham Jr., he just never got position. Now, you know with the Baltimore Ravens with that play, uh, with that fade route that he threw, um, that it was – it was destined for Odell Beckham Jr. They had that predetermined, I guess, that when the Baltimore Ravens got to the line, they were like, look, if we see this certain look from the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, then we're going for it. We are going for it. We're going for it all the way. So Odell Beckham Jr., if you get a one-on-one look, hey, it's coming to you, baby. Let's get it. And he got that one-on-one look, and <laughs> it was not pretty. But whoever you want to put that on, hey, I get that. I, I get that. Because I can see how people could think it was a bad throw from Lamar. And I can see how people think Odell Beckham Jr. just never got position. And this is why I, um, I'm, I'm still questioning and I'm really wondering, like, what is the status of Odell Beckham Jr.? How healthy or unhealthy is he? But I guess we'll continue to find out in the coming weeks. But to completely put this game on Lamar Jackson and say that the Baltimore Ravens are not Getting their money's worth out of Lamar Jackson, I, I think that's uh, that's crazy talk. Yeah, he did have his faults in this game uh, for sure, um, but this game was majority, huge majority, not on him for losing. Uh, because again, when when you when you are on the money, you on the money, you hitting these people in stride, you giving them plenty of opportunity, and everybody getting opportunities, everybody getting opportunities. But those opportunities are continuously going to waste, and you get nothing from them. And it's tough. It's it, there's really I don't want to say there's nothing you can do, but what you can do is limited. <laughs> like RG three, he talked about. He said, "Man, Lamar out here fighting for his life." He said he's fighting for his life. He said, "I don't know what else he could do." It's tough. It, it, it's it's really really tough. But my point is, I say all that to say. When you're having a conversation, especially the conversation that, that I've been seeing, and I've been seeing a lot of different conversations this week that have lost the context of this game. They've just looked at the final outcome and they look at the final uh, couple of drives from the Baltimore Ravens, which one they, they look at the interception in the red zone. And that, that wasn't good. That wasn't good at all because that interception, it takes away points. Uh, then they look at the fumble. But they, they, they just look at Lamar Jackson fumble, but they don't look at, oh, Ronnie Stanley just got dogged from the jump. And that's happened a lot. Not just with Ronnie Stanley, but with our offensive line. A lot with uh, them fumbles. It's just been a lot, a lot of been them getting dogged from the jump. Some of them been been Lamar too now. So, but some of them just been getting, they've been getting dogged from jump. Uh, but then, and then they look at the sack uh, at the very end. Um, so, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's tricky, but. Really, in my opinion, it ain't that tricky. It's not that tricky to just actually look at what happened. And again, with these, we've t- been talking about this for years. When it comes to the, the big media, uh, when it comes to them talking about different teams and whatnot, I know they have a tough job to do. So I got to give them, they have an extremely tough job to do. They can't look at every single game. And they don't look at every single game. So that's why when you have people that do actually look at the game, it's important to hear them. It's important, in my opinion, to, 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 to listen to what they got to say. But I know with the big media guys like the Stephen A. Smith, the Shannon Sharps and whatnot, all of them, they can't sit. They don't sit there and watch every single play from every single game because that'd be too much. They wouldn't have time to actually do what their job is. But when they do do their job, when they don't have context, I think it takes away a lot from it. 